Thank you, Ajay, for that timely word for us. Uh, Ajay began his exhortation this morning. Uh, early in his talk, he had mentioned that there were times when Jesus was rejoiced in his heart and was, was uh, happy about certain, time, certain events uh, in the scriptures. And there's one of such times where the Bible explicitly re uh, records that Jesus rejoiced and let's see what he rejoiced about in Luke chapter 10. I, I did touch on several of this, what I want to point out here in Luke 10. Luke 10 verse 21. Luke 10, 21. Um, it says here, in that hour re Jesus rejoiced in his spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you've hidden these things from the wise and the prudent, and you, you reveal them to babes. Even so, Father, it seemed good in your sight. Verse 22, all things are given to me of my Father, and no man knows the Father, no one knows the Son but the Father, and who the Father is. And nobody knows the Father but the Son and the one to whom the Son reveals him. So Jesus rejoiced that God had hidden certain things from from certain people, the proud, the wise, and the prudent. But he showed them to those who come as babes. And one of those things, according to verse 22 of Luke 10, is who God as a father is. Jesus says there, you can only know God as a father if I reveal him to you. I don't take that for granted. Objectively, most of us in this room are God's children. But it is possible to know it in our minds but the experience of what that means, that God truly cares, exactly what we heard tonight, this morning, by experience knowing God as my Father in times of chaos, of trouble, and remind him, and uh, being reminded by the Holy Spirit not to fret, not to worry, that only comes by the Spirit of Jesus, revelation by the Spirit of Christ. And which one of us has to test ourselves? And one of those times to test ourselves is when as Ajay was pointing out earlier, things change or there's chaos and things don't go as I want. Am I still at rest? Is Jesus revealing the Father to me at this time? We've got to be honest. Am I, is there peace in my heart? It's not just my Father in heaven. That's true. But by experience, it's quite a different matter. Jesus says you won't know that except I reveal it to you. We have to have periods of test. When things are not going well, I'm learning this more and more also. And I want those times of test to see if it's true. Will things work out? Will, will God take care of you? This morning I still have such times and see, just stay calm. You don't need to fret. Big things or small things, I'm in control. This is what the Spirit of Christ does for us. You know, towards the end of the life of Jesus, Philip asked him once, Jesus, show us the Father, John 14. And that will be enough. And you know what Jesus says to him? I've been with you all this time, Philip. And you're still asking, show us the Father. Have you been coming to this church? God may be saying to some of us, all these years you've been hearing about me, I'm hearing about the Father. And still when the time of testing comes, you still don't know the Father. He who has seen me, Jesus said there, has seen the Father. In other words, to know the Father, it has to be, it's the same as knowing Christ. As I pursue the, the, know, the knowledge of Jesus, the experience of Christ, fellowship with Him, walking with Him, automatically this experience of the Father is enlarged in my heart. Last week we read that uh, verse in John 14 also, where it says, He will keep my commandments. Right? My Father and I will come and make our abode in Him. That's quite a verse. I think that's John 14, uh, 21 or so, 23. My Father and I will come and live with that man. It's through Christ, pursuing Jesus, keeping His word, walking with Him. John 14, verse 23. If you love me, you will keep my words, and my Father will love that man also. We will come and make our abode with him. So 
It's by knowing Christ, walking with Him. This thing, the, the understanding of God, it's not just something we should have in our head, but should come by experience. And God will test it. He will, so that you can determine for yourself, do I really know God as my Father? Am I at peace in all circumstances of life? Um, in Matthew 7, Matt, uh, Jay talked a lot of, in Matthew 6 about birds not fretting, not worrying, fl the f flowers of the field. God takes care of them. But in Matthew 7, I want to just close with this, this verse of what Jesus commands us to do also. In Matthew 7, he says here in Matthew 7, verse 7, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For to the one who asks, he receives, and the one who seeks will find, and the one who knocks, it will be opened to him. What man is there of you whose son will ask for bread, and you'll give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, you'll give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, we as fathers, compared to God, are evil, how give good, good, good gifts to our children, how much more will our Father, who is in heaven, give us good things? Matthew 7, 7 is what I just want to point on here very quickly. I'm learning just to simply ask in faith. Come into God in faith and ask Him. When things are started, when I'm tempted to be afraid, when I'm, whatever it might be, I'm just simply learning to go to my Father and ask in Him. Do you see what I'm, what I'm finding with God is that person who comes in faith, God delights so much that this person trusts that I'm going to do that thing. And God does it. He answers, maybe not even the way I want it, but there's still that peace, that assurance. God is with me. My Father is with me now. I just need to go and ask Him. Will you do that? Whatever troubles you, whatever, whenever temptations, ask. But you must ask in faith, James says, or else you'll get nothing. I've seen that with God, that He delights that you believe I can do that. Okay, because you trust that I will, watch me. And again, I'm not saying that it will answer the way I want it, but there's a peace that he gives. There's an assurance. I want more and more of this. I'm, getting, I'm experiencing a little bit more and more. And like Ajay was saying earlier, the test is when there's chaos. Ask him, Father, this is not looking good, but I believe you can see me through. He's not, it has not failed even once. It can't. I'm telling you, it can't. Just ask him in faith. We're God's children, brothers and sisters. Do you know that? Not just here. I know we sing it all the time. By experience, seek after Jesus. Test it out. Test Matthew 7, 7 out this week and see if it fails. When those times are coming, and they will come, ask. Go in the name of Jesus. John 16, that John Ajay was pointing to earlier. Jesus says, I'm not going to ask for you. In one of those verses there, it says, the Father himself loves you. I'm just saying to you, brothers and sisters, test it out and see if it fails. It can't, I already know. God cares for us. Amen. blessed and challenged by what I heard today. Um, I mean, Brother Ajay was sharing about Gehazi. Gehazi. Um, and I was um, reminded of Demas in um, um, in 2 Timothy 4 verse 10. You know, um, Demas is somebody who worked with Paul for a very long time and uh, he he deserts him, and you know, because Paul says that you know, Demas deserts him because he love he loves he's in love with the present world, and then he goes to Thessalonica, and um, one of the things that uh, comes as a warning to me and is that Demas is is I mean, it doesn't say that Demas disagreed with Paul on some doctrine or didn't see eye to eye with him, you know, I mean, like people who disagreed with. You know, Paul and must have left, and you know, even um, Judas Iscariot. You know, he 
completely didn't agree with jesus you know like he wanted messiah to be the king and ruler he uh, when jesus said he has to die you know he denied him and um but demas is somebody who who agreed everything with paul said probably and uh, um but he uh, you know he his 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 faith got weakened um by the love of this world and um you know one of the dangers those days was to suffer you know because paul had to go through extreme suffering and uh, even to death and uh, but you know, demas felt like you know maybe it's not worth it you know to um about this cross and the way of the cross and you know and then he deserted him so um you know we may not we may agree with i mean every teaching and we hear you know and we are in more um you know in danger of um being like demas um, you know who agrees with everything you know who don't see any issue with what we hear in the church who um so i just felt like you know i'd say take it as a warning you know from a life um uh, that agreed with everything with paul said but ultimately lost his faith um but in the same chapter you know i see an encouragement also that you know uh, john mark who once desert him in acts 15 you know in the same chapter he talks about paul you know he bring john mark with me because he is useful to me you know john mark would have um repented and come back and uh, that's a great hope you know an encouragement um and i um uh, like we heard in gehazi you know we can you know see miracles and you know, gehazi saw miracles which um elisha has done uh, but nothing has helped him and I, i don't think anything can stop us from losing our precious faith and devotion for the lord if i am if i'm not watchful of it and you know, on jude it says content for your faith earnestly and i just want to take that as a warning um i <clears throat> and um um i was you know we had this soccer the last two weeks of the t-ball and baseball and uh, and i really thank god for um brother santosh and his family who in poured out pour, pour, pours out into the kids lives and um one thing i learned from all uh, those soccer games and training is that not everybody was equally skilled you know equally talented you know every, you know some are little bit some are much better some are like medium and some are you know needs to be worked you know they had to spend time you know with their those people and train them and um, i just saw i learned something from that that um you know in in the in the lord's kingdom you know they are not everybody is of equal skillful you know they are equal uh, equally skillful or you know um, and uh, you know when i think about um you know when you see here about soccer you know final the whole world will be watching that soccer game you know um, the whole eye the world of the eye, sorry the eyes of the world will be on the soccer game um but for in the in the heaven's eyes you know when these kids are playing on the soccer field the the eyes of the lord in the heaven are on those kids and uh, it's such an encouraging thing you know that you, for in the eyes of the heaven doesn't matter how skillful or talented they are and um, in the in the kingdom every uh every member every child is important every member is important for the lord and um you know in in um uh, 1st corinthians 12 uh, it talks about how you know every member is important for the lord uh no member is you know big or small it you know if I, for him everyone is important and um you know in matthew 25 14 you know the lord gives tells a parable of talents you know how the one will get five one will get two one will get one and uh, and it says matthew 25 14 the lord gives each one according to his ability and um um and in uh, and in the and the lord has given that and you know, he he made made us um and given us those abilities whether it's we can handle more or less you know you know in in the world's eyes um you know the greatness is in uh, the amount of you know talents or skills we have but uh, for the lord he knows exactly how much he gives you know in the abilities and uh, if somebody has lesser ability he works with them you know just like i saw how santosh was spending time with the weaker one spends more time with them and you know uh, you know be, you know the patience you know so, so that's really encouraging for me to see how you know even those who are weak in faith the lord can work um with them you know and encourage them and um and um uh so 
And the last thing I want to share is that uh, him, um, yeah, how the Lord m has a purpose for each one of us, you know, and you know, no matter how brilliant or skillful we are, we have a purpose, and the Lord has a purpose for each one of us, and that purpose is to, for uh, Romans 8, 29, to be conform us into his image, and, um, and he has a plan for each one of us. And um, um, in uh, Luke 1, um, Luke 1, when um, it talks about um, the birth of um, John the Baptist, it says a couple of times that, um, that John, uh, Luke one fifteen. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. I mean, this is regarding John the Baptist. And he will drink um, uh, no wine or liquor and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And it says again, you know, um, uh, and, and even it talks about Jesus, that he will be great in the sight of the Lord. And um, greatness in the sight of the world is not, I mean, you won't see, hear that from the heaven. Greatness in the sight of the Lord is is um, what it talks about John the Baptist and even about Jesus, and uh, the world looks at the greatness, but uh, but the Lord looks at the heart and um, greatness in the sight of the Lord. And uh, one of the greatness in the sight of the Lord, I, I saw. Um, I mean, we heard about that today also. Matthew 15, great is the faith. How, oh, oh woman, how great is your faith? I want um, that to be said about me, you know, that, um, you know, about my children, that oh, uh, Matthew 15, 28, Jesus said to her, Oh woman, your, your faith is great. And um, may the Lord help us and our children to, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter how, uh, I mean, they, even when when the Lord gave the, talents to each one of them, you know, we're not supposed to be comparing with each other and uh, uh, be discouraged or be jealous, you know, but uh, even when the Lord, you know, He made us according to uh, uh, His, uh, according to His purpose and He, in His total sovereignty, He made in each and every child and um, and uh, His purpose is for us to, to be great in His sight, not in greatness in the eyes of the world. So may the Lord help us to to change our attitude and you know even for our children you know that was i was challenged and encouraged you know even though they are, may not be good in the worldly skills and abilities you know can they have can they grow in such a way that they'll be great in the sight of the lord in terms of the faith you know and uh, and and we know about the faith we heard about in the church you know we, it's not about you know asking for miracles or you know it, it's all there but faith which can lead us into devotion for the lord and total obedience to his uh, to him and uh, uh, I, be, I believe may the Lord help us you know uh, to for each and every child to be encouraged and uh, not compare with others and uh, but whatever gift the Lord gives us whatever uh, role the Lord gives us in the church to be completely sad and focus on that and um, not just for entire you know not worry about other things but what purpose the lord has come brought for me he has a purpose for me i don't need to compare for, with others i don't need to worry about what others are doing but what that single purpose the lord has brought here for me and he brought my children here and that way i don't have to be discouraged or don't have to um, you know look at others and be condemned the lord has a purpose for me and the lord has a purpose for my children and um, May the Lord help us to have that desire to to contend for that faith and uh, uh, to be great in His sight. Amen.